Today we're going to walk through how we can use JavaScript to extend a spreadsheet so that we can actually create some of our own custom functions. So today we're going to work with Google Sheets and you can get to Google Sheets by going to sheets.google.com. If you've ever worked with Microsoft Excel or anything similar, uh, this is actually very similar to that except it all runs in your browser. So if you go to sheets.google.com you can get to this interface where you can very easily create a new spreadsheet. And once you get to this point you should, it should look pretty familiar if you've ever used another spreadsheet application. I'm going to go ahead and give my spreadsheet a name so that I can find it later. Uh, I'm going to call this Sample Student Gradebook. And what we're going to do here today is, is just identify how we might be able to use JavaScript to kind of do some useful things in something like a student gradebook. So I'm going to go ahead and start. I'm going to give a name and I'm going to give a score. So here we're going to make these bold so we can tell these are headings. And then I'm going to give some names here. We'll say Joe, Johnny, Sam, uh, Sue, Sally, uh, Dan, and Tom. And we're going to give some scores. So Joe will say Joe got an 88, Johnny got a 91, Sam got a 63, Sue got a 92, Sally got a 76, Dan got a 40, he didn't study, and uh, Tom got a, say, 68. So we have all of our scores here. And if you've ever used a spreadsheet before, you know we can do things like this. You know, if we want to see the class average, we can just create a formula here, and we're going to type in average, we'll get the average score. So you can see here, this will give us the average, and you know, th this works pretty effectively. Uh, but you know, we, we might want to do a little bit more than this, and fortunately, uh, Google Sheets has an ability for us to write some JavaScript so that we can build our own custom functions. So, you know, one of the, we might want to do a few things, and you know, just to write a quick sample, I'm going to go ahead and show how we might create a, a, a basic function. So we'll go to Tools, Script Editor, and this is going to open up the Google uh, script editor. So I'll say custom functions for Google Sheets. So now we have this new file and we can use this to uh, we can use this to create custom functions. So typically the first thing we want to do when we write any type of function is we want to give it some documentation. So we can write comments like this just like we would in any other JavaScript with the two forward slashes, but if we write a special kind of comment, uh, a forward slash and then two asterisks, this is uh, a better comment for documentation. And they, we usually use these in JavaScript to identify that we're going to describe what a function is going to do or we're going to talk about how to use it. So, you know, if we want to say this is a sample function for Google Sheets, you know, one of the things that we might want to do here is declare a function and we'll say, we'll call this function my sample. And my sample, you know, if we just want to see that this works, we can say return zero. So we'll create a function here that's just going to give us a zero. And, uh, you know, one of the things that we can do is we can actually add a, a tag or a uh, something to identify that this is actually going to be used as a custom function. I'm going to type the at symbol and then custom function. So now that I have this, if I go into my gradebook and I want to use my sample, I start typing and there it is. It's right there. I go ahead and select it and we hit enter and you can see here it's going to run my code and I get zero, which is exactly what I would expect given that the only thing that this function is going to do is return zero. Now, one of the things that we're going to encounter very quickly when we deal with spreadsheets is we can't actually just work with individual values. So far, we haven't really done much with anything beyond a few basic variables. Uh, we're going to need to use something called an array here. So in JavaScript, we can create an array a couple of different ways. We can just say var my array is equal to new array is one very straightforward way of doing this. So what is an array? An array is more or less a way for us to store multiple values using one uh, name. So, you know, I can do things like this to add values to my array. My array 0 is equal to, let's say we'll, we'll set this one equal to 10. My array 1 is equal to 20. And now we have, we're starting to work with this array. We could also build this up a different way. Var, same as my array, we can use angle or the square brackets and we could say 10 20 and both of these now have the same values and if I wanted to identify what these were let's go ahead and we'll say return my array 0 
plus my array 1. So if you can add 10 and 20, you should be able to understand that when we come back into this and we type my sample, this is going to give me 30. So that's exactly what we would expect. So this is actually giving us this capability to kind of create more, uh, in more complex computation, more uh, calculation using these simple JavaScript functions. So you know, if I wanted to build a sum function, one thing I might want to do is something like this. So this is my own custom sum function. And we'll mark this as a custom function. And we'll say function my sum. We're going to give this one a, a parameter because we want to actually compute something. So values is going to be an array. Now, one thing that we don't know yet is how can we tell how many values are in one of our arrays? Well, there's fortunately a very easy way for us to do this. We can just say return values.length. And of course, this isn't going to give us a sum, but it'll tell us, you know, or it'll identify how we can use this values.length. So I'm going to go back to my, uh, my spreadsheet here, and I'm going to say how many values and we can use my sum, which doesn't do a sum, but it will count. And we can say we'll pass in these values. And if we count them by ourselves, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven values, we hit enter. And that's going to tell us there are seven values. So we can use this values.length or this array variable.length to identify how many things are there. So if we want to compute a sum, the first thing we're going to want to do is create a total because we're going to want to return that total. So we're going to do all of the, uh, the thinking in between these two lines. So we're going to start off with the total value, we're going to set it equal to zero, and then we're going to compute it. So the way we can do this, we can create a counter variable. We'll start with zero, and we'll say while i is less than values.length, total is equal to total plus values i. And then we're going to need to increase i. So we're going to set i equal to i plus one. Now, we're going to do this so often that uh, you know, I, setting a variable to itself plus one is so common that in, in programming in JavaScript and Java and C and C Sharp and C++ and many other languages, Python, or actually not Python, but pretty much all of the other languages have this capability to say plus plus, which says set i, you know, this statement right here says set i equal to one more than whatever i is right now. So this is allowing us to count through our array. So what we actually hap, hap, or what happens now in our function is we call my sum with some values. We start with zero. We start with a counter, and we're going to say while our counter is less than the number of values in this array, we're going to increase the total. Total is equal to the last total plus this current value. Then we're going to go to the next value. So we'll start with i equal to zero. Uh, we'll add that first one to the total. We'll increase uh, i by one, so i will be one. We'll, start, we'll move through this again and again and again until we get to the end of our array, and then we'll return our total. And if we just want to check to see that this works, we can actually come back in here and we can see, which this is actually not giving us what we expect. This 0889163, this is actually not what we want. But the reason for that is because JavaScript has interpreted our values as text. It's, you know, and if we look at this, this is actually 88 right here, 91 right here, 16 or 63, right here, 92, 76, 40, and 68. So that's actually, we can kind of figure out what we meant to do there, but it's not really right. So we can actually say, JavaScript, I know that this is a number. I want you to treat it like a number. Uh, there's a couple of ways we can do that. But in this case, we can use a function that's built into JavaScript called parseInt. And what, we will, what will happen now, if we go back to our, our page here, we can see, 518. And if we look, my sum b2 to b8, 518, that looks about right. If we want to check that, we can type in the built-in sum function that's been available in, in Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel. It's one of the very first things that was in, or very first uh, functions built in. And you can see here, this is giving us the same result. Our custom function is computing the sum just the way the built-in function is, is computing it. So let's go ahead and, and remove all of that. It's good that we've figured out how to do this and we can demonstrate how to work with an array. Uh, but there is one thing that we can do that makes this a little bit simpler as programmers. So this, uh, this pattern of taking a value, counting through a list of value or list of things, uh, and computing something based on that list is so common that we have another type of loop that we use just to make this simpler for ourselves. So this code here, I'm going to go ahead and put a comment in all of these lines because we're going to replace it with something that is functionally equivalent. So we're going to use a for loop. And what a for loop does is it gives you the ability to take all of these, line 21, line 22, 
and then line 24 and do them or take all of those steps onto one line. So for var i equals zero, i is less than values dot length, i plus plus. We're going to take this line here and we're going to put that right right down in line 27. So this, these nice succinct three lines of code are functionally equivalent to these five lines of code, which are a little bit, you know, maybe a little bit more obvious what's going on. But uh, this becomes so second nature in programming that pretty much everybody understands how it works uh, after you've written, you know, a few programs. So you can see here, it works very similar. The way you would kind of interpret this is we're going to start with a variable called i, and we're going to start that at zero. Uh, we're going to continue through this, so while i is less than values.length, notice they're very, very, they, they, this part looks exactly the same. Uh, values, or why I, while i is less than values.length, we're going to add one to i at the end of every one of our iterations of this loop. So what we have here is for var i equals zero, i while i is less than values.length, and adding one to i at the end of every loop, we're going to add to total. And we can actually make this simpler as well. JavaScript has a, a nice shorthand that allows us to say, we're gonna take a variable, we're gonna add something to it and set that to the same variable. If we just say total is e plus equals parse int values i, what we get there is we say, we're going to take total and we're going to add whatever this is to it. So we're going to add, we're gonna set total to the sum of total and whatever this is. So this code on lines 21 to 25 is exactly the same as lines 26 to 28 for, so, the, but it's a little bit more simple. It's a little bit easier to type, it takes up less space. So this will still work if we go back to our grade book and we use that again, my sum. You can see here, this is still gonna run. So that's all good. So why might we actually wanna do this is the big question. And the point is, you know, there's already a sum function built in. There's, you know, these things already exist within uh, within Sheets or within Excel or something else. Uh, but why might we actually wanna do this? Well, the reason we might wanna do this is let's say we wanna do something that's a little more complex. Let's say we know what our average for this is, and a 74 is not a bad average, but let's say we wanna understand what the average is for the middle, you know, students that didn't get an A and students that didn't fail the test. So if we wanted to say, what's the average of B to D? Well, that's a little harder to do. We could do it. We could sort the data we have. We could, uh, we could use uh, some type of, uh, we could use some type of special, you know, sum if or average if function to determine this. But we're going to, we're going to really kind of try to wedge something in here that's a little bit more complicated. Fortunately, using a sum, uh, custom function, we can build this uh, in using JavaScript. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new function down here at the bottom, and I'm going to say this function will compute an average of values if the values are between 60 and 89. So anything that would be less than an A or a passing grade, but no failing grades, no A's. So and we'll go ahead and mark this as a custom function. So now I can say function bd average, we'll go ahead and say it's anything between a b and a d. We can't put a hyphen in here because then that's b minus d average, which won't work. We're going to pass in some values. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with the total, var total equals zero. Uh, and we're also going to say a count because we can't just assume that all of the values that we pass in are going to match our criteria. They're not all going to be between 60 and 89. So we're going to start with a count equal to zero as well. Now what we're going to do is we are going to iterate through our, our values for var i equals zero, i is less than values.length, i plus plus, which again you'll see so often, uh, we're going to say if values i is greater than, uh, six, greater than or equal to 60 and values i is less than or equal to 89. We could also probably just say less than 90 here. We're going to add one to count and we are going to set total, or we're going to add values to total. So down here at the bottom we will return an average, return total divided by count. 
Now, we might run into the same problem again if we use this. You know, if we want to see BD average and add these values, we might run into the same problem where we create that long string and you can see here that's that's exactly what's happening. So, we want to make sure that we set, you know, we want to parse this out. So, if we'll go ahead and just create a new variable right in line here. We'll say var score is equal to parse in values i. Now we have score here. We're going to change it 1, 2, 3 places because what we're doing is we're now saying this score value is definitely an integer. We're not going to just append it like it's a string or append it like it's text. We're going to say this is an integer and if it's greater than 60 and less than 90 we're going to add it to our total. So now when we go back to our gradebook we could see all right, you know, if we take the A's and the D's out, it's actually, or A's and F's out, it's actually a very similar average for this class. Uh, so, you know, we don't have high achievers or low achievers bringing down the, the total average or bringing up the total average. So you can see here, this allows us to create a function that will do a little bit more of a complex computation. And it's very, very simple. The only thing we have to do here is add in this at custom function tag uh, into our comment. So this makes it really, really easy for us to do a little bit more complex data analysis within something like a basic student gradebook. Now, if we uh, if we want to do things like uh, if we want to expand on custom menus or we want to create more uh, we want to create more interaction in some in a file like this, we could do that as well. Uh, and We'll go ahead and cover that in another lesson where we can identify how we can actually have uh, manipulation of our data using uh, objects in the, in the spreadsheet so that we can really you know, customize our spreadsheets even further. Thanks for watching.